हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीतू जैन वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन न्यू डेली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक ऑफ द जॉब ट्रेनिंग मेथड्स बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द डिस्कशन लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द कंटेंट्स इंट्रोडक्शन ट्रेनिंग मेथड्स एंड समरी आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल the students will be able to gain an insight into various of the job training methods discuss the merits and demerits of different of the job training methods a training method is a mechanism or a device that a trainer employs for delivering content of a subject or for facilitating the learning process with a view to achieving the preset learning objectives the training method enables for setting up a communication process between the trainer and the learner both of whom have a common learning objective meaning of of the job training method along with its merits and demerits has already been discussed in the previous module there are a number of of the job training methods that are used for imparting training some of them are of the job training methods there are various of the job training methods which can be used for imparting training these are lectures the group discussion method case study method role play seminar training in basket exercises field visits t group training or sensitivity training brainstorming simulation method business games vestibule training and adventure learning the lecture method and uh, this method has three parts we need to tell audience first of all what we are going to tell them then we need to tell them and then we need to tell them what we have told them that is we have to summarize our talk planning the lecture before preparing for the lecture a trainer should take into account these four things who is your audience what is the purpose of your talk what is the time available what is the subject matter a lecture method has some merits it is specifically useful for providing knowledge input it is useful for special occasions wherein trainer has to deliver some information to a people a group of people in a very short time it can cater for a large number of audience and it is relatively cheaper method of training disadvantages or demerits of this method are it leads to poor retention since it is a one way communication audience are not interested much after a period of time they are unable to retain the information lack of feedback there is no feedback from the audience it is limited to knowledge input there is no participation of trainees as well and it relies on good presentation of the trainer and it is a trainer centered method discussion this method is directed towards drawing out the experiences of the participants either to think through an issue in all its forms or generate a unified perspective on an unstructured problem among the participants objectives of the discussion need to be clearly established in advance sometimes group discussion can be woven around a pre-identified group leaders on other occasions a group leader may be left to emerge as part of the discussion this method encourages skills in people which are useful in any decision making process trainer must summarize the main points that emerge during the discussion towards the end the purpose of discussion is to share views to collect and generate ideas to obtain reactions or agreement of the 
participants to stimulate motivation and commitment to develop teamwork skills and to bring about attitudinal change a key question is raised by the trainer which is then discussed by the trainees or participant discussion is centered around that key question and finally discussion is summarized by the trainer this is a layout for leading a discussion a sort of circle another layout for leading a discussion what are the merits of discussion it is a trainee centered method it engages trainees actively it provides them opportunity to exchange ideas information and opinions this training method is also widely employed for subject matters which involve strategic or procedural topics as it encourages interaction and free expression of group opinion this method is group for problem solving disadvantages or demerits of this method success of this method depends on the entry behavior of the trainees it is a very time consuming method it requires a good control over the process of discussion this method is not suited to new learning and it can only be applied among groups that have few members case study case study is a written description of an actual situation in business which provokes in the reader the need to decide what is going on what the situation really is and what the problems are and what can and should be done to resolve the problem case study method is a learning technique in which a real life situation or a series of events together with the surrounding facts opinions and prejudices which influences decisions is presented to trainees for their analysis and consideration of possible solution of problems identified case study method can be used to develop the following skills qualitative and quantitative analytical skills including problem identification skills decision making skills application skills using various tools techniques and theories oral communication skills including speaking listening and debating skills time management skills interpersonal or social skills creative skills and written communication skills while selecting a case we must take into account the training or learning objective which we wish to achieve the entry behavior of the trainees and the time which is available to us as a trainer merits of case study method it promotes analytical thinking and problem solving skills it encourages open mindedness and provides a means of integrating interdisciplinary knowledge trainees become aware of managerial concepts and processes and their application to specific situation demerits it is very time consuming and expensive to prepare good case studies a real life case may not be useful in different cultural situations role plays such as single role play multiple role play structured role play and spontaneous role play when to use a role play role play can be used to develop effective communication and interpersonal skills in situations where negotiation or performance appraisal or disciplinary interviews are to be conducted it provides an opportunity for trainer to involve trainees intensively in the learning process it provides an opportunity to practice approaches to forthcoming life situations it is an opportunity to replay a situation that was not successfully handled in the past in order to extract lessons for the future or when a change in attitude is desirable 
trainees can come to appreciate the viewpoint of another person or as a member of that group. What are the merits of role play? It enables learners to express hidden feelings. It enables learners to discuss private issues and problems. It also enables learners to empathize with others and understand their motivations. It provides opportunity for non-articulate learners and emphasizes importance of non-verbal emotional responses. It is very motivational and effective since it involves activity. It provides rapid feedback for both learner and facilitator. It is a learner centered method and addresses itself to the needs and concerns of the trainee. And the group can control content and pace. It also closes the gap between training and real life situations. It also brings about attitudinal change. Demerits of this method are facilitator loses control over what is learnt and the order in which it is learnt. Simplifications can mislead. It uses a large amount of time and other resources. It depends on the quality of facilitator and learner. Its impact may trigger off withdrawal or defense symptoms. Sometimes it may be seen as too entertaining or frivolous. It may also dominate learning to the exclusion of solid theory and facts. It may depend on what learners already know. Seminar training. When the matter to be covered by the trainer is relatively less, but the audience is large, seminar method is preferred. In this method, large groups are trained in a short time frame. Here in this method, training is imparted as experience sharing methodology, where experts share their experience and try to solve the specific query, if any. With this method, only a small or niche part is covered. In basket exercises, it is a form of training which attempts to simulate the working situation by setting the trainee realistic tasks. The trainees are presented with papers such as letters and memos placed in the in basket or in tray to which they respond individually. The results of the exercise are then analyzed, discussed and assessed on the basis of the decisions made. The in-basket technique simulates the type of decisions that would typically be handled in a particular position. Entry exercises require the learner to make choices. A constraint is introduced, putting pressure on the learner to make decisions about each item in a certain period of time. The follow-up is a discussion about why decisions were made in that way a consideration of the effects of some of the decisions and justification of some of the decisions made. Merits of this method is, it is a very inexpensive and simple method and trainees learn problem solving skills. It also provides concrete subjects for practical work and discussion opportunities for active participation. The merits of this method are, it is very time consuming to produce in basket exercises, sometimes difficult to achieve real life situations. If handled insensitively, it may undermine the confidence of some learners. Field visits. Field visits as a training method provides a dynamic environment near to or within the scenes of real action for learners to be a part of. It is a training method in which opportunities are provided to the learners to visit organizations, shop floors, fields, community sites or villages with a view to be a part of, observe and collect information to reflect, analyze and learn. The learners use the experience undergone by them for learning during and after the visit. 
which simulate and stimulate thinking and triggers the process of continued learning. Merits of this method are ground realities of the learning environment increases trust in the learning tremendously. As learning is in near job related situation, more effective transfer of learning is also ensured as compared to other methods. This method can contribute equally towards learning by trainees and the host organization thus benefiting both. Scope for unintended learning is very high and can be tapped for future learning. Trainees participation and involvement is of very high degree and it also helps in group building. Demerits of this method are it places very high demand on the trainer with regard to planning and preparation of field visits. Logistics and arrangements if not done properly can hamper achievement of desired objectives. There is a lot of dependence on external factors including host organization etc. Uncertainty is very high. Physical conditions may cause inconvenience. Very high trainer skills are required to convert these uncertain situations into the rare learning opportunities that they are. It is expensive as compared to other methods. Sensitivity training or T group training. Sensitivity training is a group experience designed to provide maximum possible opportunity for the individuals to expose their behavior, give and receive feedback, experiment with new behavior and develop awareness of self and others. In this focus is on face to face interaction and confrontation. Trainees are brought together in a free and open environment wherein participants discuss themselves. Important features of this training are the group size is small around 10 to 15 trainees work with the trainer and it is a agenda less group as group has no fixed agenda or instructions and to see good results the duration of program should be 5 days. It is an experiential approach to training and the trainer acts as a catalyst. T group training aims at inducing the sensitive perception that helps in diagnosing processes that usually affect relationship at work which in turn can affect organizational tasks. Demerits of this method, trainees become so sensitive to the feeling of others that they are unwilling to take hard decisions and it involves stress situations which can cause serious psychological damage, behavior breakdown to the participants. Brainstorming. Brainstorming is a specialized form of discussion method that can be used in a training situation. It is a technique used for finding solutions by means of stimulating ideas. A small group of people with or without conscious knowledge of the subject meet and contribute any suggestion or idea that comes into their heads no matter how fantastic or impossible it may sound. All suggestions are encouraged and criticism is not allowed at this stage. Although contributors are later invited to explain their ideas. Subsequently all the ideas submitted at the meeting are sifted and assessed. Merits of this method is it is mainly used in problem solving. It helps in generating a wide range of solutions and options in solving problem, addressing an issue and stimulating creativity in a group. Demerits of this method, it is very time consuming method and it is you know it requires high trainer skills and some learners may not participate in this method. Simulation method. Simulation method is best known for imparting hands on experience to the participants. This method is designed in such a manner that lectures, discussions, debates and interactions are kept to a minimum. Instead, each trainee is given a simulation that will simulate the tasks he is expected to perform. These simulators can take on various forms. There are for example various activities games, equipment simulators, real life activities 
or even role playing, these are incorporated to make the learning comprehensive. Merits of simulation method is, it is ideal for situations where the participants are expected to handle machines or real equipment from day one. In this process, it becomes essential that these trainees are having hands-on experiences in running the show. Hence, the real-life situation problems will also be faced by these participants as they are working exactly in the real-life environment. Business Games It's a learning experience in which groups of trainees operate as management teams of imaginary companies in a carefully defined competitive market. Empires or a computer evaluate each company's decisions to increase investment in production and to spend less on research and at the end of the game, the performance of companies are compared. Trainees learn both from the game itself and from subsequent reviews of performance. Merits of business game is, it is a participative method. Trainees participate in the method and you know the extent to which it mirrors actual managerial tasks. It is useful for developing problem solving skills, leadership skills and fostering teamwork. Demerits, it is very difficult and expensive to develop management game. The games are artificial. Trainees who are successful in these games may not be successful on the job. It is very time intensive to develop games. And sometimes competition of the game itself may overshadow learning objectives. Vestibule training. In this, a training center called vestibule is set up and actual job conditions are duplicated or simulated in it. Expert trainers are also employed to provide training with the help of equipment and machines which are identical with those used at workplace. Merits of this method, trainees can concentrate on learning without disturbance of workplace noise. The interest and motivation of the trainee is high as the real job conditions are duplicated. It also permits trainees to practice without the fear of being observed. Demerits, it is expensive method and training situation is somewhat artificial and trainee does not get a feel of the real job. Outbound training programs. Outbound training programs. It is also known as outdoor training or wilderness training. It is a training delivery method aimed at developing teamwork, leadership skills, self-awareness and problem solving and conflict management skills through structured outdoor activities. The activities range from highly strenuous and challenging ones such as mountain climbing, river rafting, rappelling, less physically challenging ones such as rope courses, trust falls, and even simulated high-level activities. Merits of this method are, it allows trainees to interact and build relationships with co-workers in a situation not governed by formal business rules, that trainees share a strong emotional experience which may open them to change, and these exercises can serve, serve as metaphor for organizational events and behaviors and these exercises can be self-enlightening, invigorating, and self-esteem enhancing. Demerits of this method are, it is highly physically demanding and risky nature of many adventure learning activities. The company's risk for negligence claims due to personal injury, emotional distress, or invasion of privacy. The high cost of such activity is another drawback and the lack of evidence that transfer of what is learned occurs is the main drawback. Summary. In this module, various types of off-the-job training methods are discussed in detail. The advantages and disadvantages of various methods have also been discussed. Different methods are suited for different purposes. Choice of method would depend upon the learning objective. Thank you very much.